Welcome to the Weaver Wire. I'm your host, Xander Watts, and in today's show, we have some school updates, some how to do's, and some student stories. Whether you get your news from the store or from the Weaver Wire, we're out with the old and in with the new wave of news, featuring the pros and cons of physical newspaper versus digital newspaper. Did you know that in the late 1900s, newspapers were incredibly popular in America? However, with the growing popularity of the internet, physical newspapers faded in, in irrelevance. However, there are still many benefits for reading physical newspapers today. Newspapers still play a vital role in the media landscape. They contain many important facts about people, places, and things from around the world. Also, reading is scientifically proven to lower stress and calm the mind. Many digital newspapers allow you to not only read, but also interact with the stories as well. With just the use of a smart device, you can see more photos, watch videos, or even comment on the stories that you're reading. And it's also much better for the environment because it doesn't use so much paper. When reading the physical newspaper, you are more focused at the story at hand and less distracted by the notifications and alerts you might get on your phone. Being more focused on the story at hand means that you're more aware of what's going on in the world. All in all, the physical newspaper is a healthier and less distracting way of getting your news. Reading the digital newspaper helps to reduce the impact of printing physical copies. And given the fact that you can always carry an up-to-date version of the news in the palm of your hand, the only real benefit to a physical newspaper is when people prefer the classic feel of holding it in your hands. I'm Jackson King, and in this segment, we'll provide some college preparation tips. Each year, thousands of students prepare to take the next step and apply for college. Applying for college can be a strenuous task, so here are our tips on how to make that process a little less stressful. For juniors, they should begin to research colleges that will fit their needs. A good place to start would be the College Foundation of North Carolina. CFNC has several search tools to find the perfect school for you in NC. Juniors should also research SAT and ACT requirements for specific schools they are looking to attend. Make sure to check with your college of choice to ensure you have completed the appropriate steps to meet their admission requirements. For seniors, look into AP classes at your high school and local grants or scholarships. If you're unsure of your career path, taking the Career Cluster Match Quiz can give you options relating to your interests and can be found at nccareers.org. Now for seniors. They should create a FAFSA account and be ready to complete the FAFSA application in October of their senior year in order to receive financial aid. Seniors should also begin to, to send applications and transcripts and being aware of the deadlines of the colleges they're applying to. Students should also begin to create an ideal college list. Prepare for standardized tests. Get community service learning hours. Build relations with community members for recommendations. Consider if a standard college is the best fit for you. And work on organization and time management skills. To begin the college search, create a College Board account at the College Board website. We recommend you start with at least 10 schools to look into, but narrow it down to three or five by the time you return your senior year. Be sure to take advantage of as many college tours as you can, even if they're all virtual. When deciding on the right college, take into consideration things like location, desired major, available opportunities, job placement, and travel expenses. When considering standardized testing, practicing and registering for the SAT as well as the ACT, before taking these tests, consider which would be the best fit for you. Registration and practice can be found on the College Board website. If you've already taken these tests, you can work on improving your scores using Khan Academy. Underclassmen are eligible to take the pre-SAT and pre-ACT several times before their senior year if they're not happy with their score. Community service learning hours are not required to graduate, but are strongly encouraged since they're great to have on applications. Research clubs that are offered at your school for opportunities on service learning hours. 
A high enough number of these hours can give you a tassel at graduation or even an award. Make sure you are building good relationships with your counselors, teachers, mentors, and community coordinators in order to have a variety of options for your college recommendations. You need to have two faculty members and one community person available for recommendation in the fall. If heading straight to a four-year college out of high school doesn't sound like the right option for you, there are still several other post-secondary schools you can consider. Taking a gap year, joining the military, heading to a community college, grade school, or junior college are all different paths you can consider while applying. Seniors should have good organization and time management skills during this application process. Building a college or scholarship folder is very important in order to establish a time frame for, for applying while also maintaining a sense of order during the school season. With the deadline for early applications looming near, this can be a stressful time for some students, so we hope that these tips and tricks help take some of the pressure off your backs and prepare for your future. Next up, we had a chance to talk to Kyle Wooden, Director of Admission from Guilford College, to learn a little more about the school. Guilford was founded in 1837 by the Society of Friends, also known as the Quakers. We're a small private liberal arts college right in the center of Greensboro, North Carolina. We're a residential campus even though we only have about 1,200 students. The vast majority of our students live on campus for four years. There's over 40 major programs to choose from and our most common major for incoming students is actually undecided. Our students are set up with a team of advisors that assist them throughout their college journey, particularly early on with choosing a major. Right now, for our declared students, business administration, biology, criminal justice, and psychology kind of round out our top four. But like I said, there's over 40 major programs to choose from at Guilford College. Um, I'm a Guilford College alum, and I came to Guilford uh, thinking about one major program and after the guidance from our uh, faculty members that we have on campus, it led me in a totally different direction. We have a very unique classroom style at Guilford. It's discussion based. So our students come to class prepared and it's a conversation for 75 minutes to a couple hours. You're never going to find yourself in a classroom where you're sitting back and watching a PowerPoint for two hours. It's a very engaging, close-knit, supportive community that we have at Guilford. I encourage all seniors, if you're undecided and not sure where you're heading for, for school next year, to apply to Guilford. At this point, we're rolling admissions, so from the moment you complete your application, and all we need to complete your application is your application, which is totally free to apply via the Common Application, the College Foundation of North Carolina, and we have our own application and your high school transcript. And we'll even um, allow an unofficial copy of your high school transcript. We are truly test optional in the application process. So if you don't feel like your test scores truly represent who you are as a student, you do not need to submit those to us. So once we receive that application and your transcript, you'll receive it an admissions decision in the mail from Guilford within seven to ten days. So our admission counselors are reading applications every single day and we want to get good news to you as soon as possible. A hundred percent of our students that receive an acceptance to Guilford College also receive a merit scholarship. Our merit scholarships are totally based on you as a student and what you're bringing to our community. So it's not just about your academic uh, prestige, it's about your, your leadership, your passion for helping out your community family responsibilities, jobs that you may have outside of school. Be sure to bring all that forward when you're applying to colleges because that can truly make a difference in that overall merit scholarship that we have to offer. So even though we are a private college and typically with private colleges, that comes at a, at a high sticker price. There's not one person on our campus that pays the sticker price to come to Guilford. If you're earning an acceptance, you're also earning a merit scholarship. And please know that myself and our mission counselors um, that are on staff are here to work with you every single step of the way. We're also offering visits at least five days a week uh, and typically two or three Saturdays a month as well. We would love to have you on campus so you can see it for yourself. I think you'd like what you see. Again, my name is Kyle Wooden and thank you so much for the opportunity. Go Guilford! Hello, I am Reporter Shawnee, and now it is time for our How To Do segment of the day. For those of us who drive, we can all have a little car trouble and sometimes get a, a flat tire. 
Well, today we will be showing you how to prepare as well as how to change that tire safely. Hi, my name is Ryan Holland and today I'm going to be talking about how to change a flat tire. So the first thing you need to know is um, where the spare is located. Uh, generally, in vehicles, the spares are located in the back. Uh, they can be found underneath, or sometimes they'll actually be in the trunk, and you can pop up these covers and they'll be inside there. Um, oftentimes, spares are fastened down with a fastener, and they'll need to be removed uh, to get access to the tire. So in this particular case, the tire is located underneath the vehicle, and it's held up with a uh, winding system. So in order to access it, we'll have to pop this cover off, and somewhere in the back on this vehicle, it's located here in the spare uh, compartment. And we'll have to access these tools, which we'll then put in here to lower the tire down. So once you get your tools out of the compartment, they'll be disassembled for space. So you'll need to put them together to get the spare down. They're connected with a series of buttons, and they just click together like this. Once you have them together, you're going to insert it into the shaft and then you'll turn it and you'll feel a click. And once you feel that clicked in, you're going to want to turn it righty tighty, lefty loosey. And as you're turning it down, if you look underneath, it's lowering the tire down. And that's where your spare is at. You'll want to get it enough so that the tire will touch the ground and that there'll be slack in the line. That way you can pull the cord that holds it up out from the wheel. Now that we have the spare lowered, we're gonna have to reach under the vehicle and disconnect it from the drop down. And then we'll simply pull it out. And there's your spare tire. So the next step is we're gonna have to break the lugs loose that are holding the flat on, and then we'll have to jack the vehicle up and get these swapped over. So now we'll have to move to the side. So for this next step, we're still going to need some tools out of the back. We'll still need those same tools that we used before to lower it. Um, they come apart and we'll reassemble them in a different way. And we'll also need this jack. This is what commonly comes with your car. Um, it's really lightweight and compact and you can use it to get your vehicle just high enough off the ground to get the tire off. So next we'll be needing this piece again. Um, typically on cars, sometimes they'll come with covers that you'll need to pop off to access your lugs. You can use the pointed edge of the uh, wrench tool. You can actually stick it right here in this notch and then pry it up against there and it should pop right off. Then you can put that out of the way. The next step is going to be we're going to need to uh, pop these lugs loose. So a lot of these lugs, um, if they haven't, the tire hasn't been taken off in a while, they can be on there pretty good. I'm pretty sure from the factory they can be tightened up to 150 uh, foot-pounds. So we're going to need quite a bit of force to break these loose. Sometimes you can do it by hand. But a lot of times when they're a bit more stuck on there, you're going to have to use the weight of gravity and yourself to help pop them loose. And once you get them all loose, then you just go at it and just wrench it off just like that. You want to do that to all six of the lugs. Now you don't want to take all the lugs all the way off yet because we still have to jack the vehicle up and if something were to go wrong with the jack you don't want to have your lugs and have your wheel fall off. So we're going to just break them loose but leave them on there still. So now that we have all the lugs broken loose, the next step is going to be to get the vehicle in the air so that we can take the wheel with the flat tire off and swap the spare on. So the first step is going to be you're going to want to move anything in the way of the vehicle out of the way just to clear up space. Uh, the next step is you're going to want to make sure you're on a relatively flat surface. Uh, if you're on a hill, it could possibly cause a rollover. And you'll also want to make sure that you have a pretty flat uh, traction surface that you'll be on. If you're on like loose gravel, that's also not a good idea. So we're on a nice, flat, solid surface. Um, so now we need to find our jack point. 
typically there'll be an arrow under the frame and it'll point to where you can actually put your jack. Um, for this video, we're gonna be using this red floor jack, but in common situations, you'd be using the bottle jack that comes with the car. So next we wanna slide the jack under and line it up with our point. Then you just wanna make sure everyone's clear of the vehicle and then just start pumping it up. You only need to go high enough just to get the wheel just barely off the ground. So now that we have the vehicle in the air and we've got all the lugs broken loose, it's time to take the wheel off. So I like to keep my hand up here and my foot here to keep the tire stable so that way when we take the lugs off it won't just fall over onto the ground. So then you just kind of hold it still and you just go out and loosen up all the lugs until they come all the way off. You want to make sure you keep, keep up with these because if you lose them, that could be potentially dangerous. All right, and that's all the lugs. Next step is to kind of use your foot to prop it, and then you just slide it right off. And that'll access your hub and your brakes and everything. Um, a lot of times, this hub part right here can get rusted, and the wheel can actually get stuck to the hub, and you might need to use a little bit of force to get the wheel loose. In this case, it just came right off. So we'll just set this to the side and leave it to put up later. All right, so then you're gonna wanna grab your spare and put it up here. You're gonna have to get it, the holes lined up with the lugs, studs on the wheel. So you can kinda use your foot again to prop it back up. And then just line, and then it just slides right on. The next step is to get your lugs Just put them on, and you're going to want to tighten them down as much as you can by hand, and then we'll have to lower the vehicle to tighten it with the wrench. So we've got the lugs as tight as we can get them by hand, so the next step to be is going to be to tighten them as much as we can with the tools that it came down. So we're gonna have to let the vehicle down to keep the wheel from spinning when we try to tighten them. That's as simple as just twisting it slightly and letting all the air out. All right, next we're gonna need these tools. You just line them up with a socket and just crank them down pretty much as tight as you can get them. And when you're tightening these down, you're gonna to wanna to do it in a star pattern. That prevents you from twisting the rotor that's on the brake. If you were to tighten them each one at a time, you could actually warp that and then you'd get problems with braking. So we're gonna go in a star pattern to prevent that from happening. And once you get them all on there, you just wanna go around one more time, make sure they're all nice and snug, and then you're safe to let the vehicle all the way down. All right, and those are just the basic steps of how to change a flat tire. Um, this will get you where you need to go, but this is just a temporary fix. You're going to want to get that tire replaced as soon as possible. Um, those lugs aren't torqued down to spec, and these tires are only meant uh, for temporary use. So definitely go to your local tire shop and get that replaced as soon as possible. But this will get you where you need to go. Uh, thank you so much for watching. My name is Ryan Holland. Playing the flute takes a lot of skill and patience. Well, in our student spotlight, we have our very own Jake Lee, showing us how he learned to play the flute in his spare time. Um, my name is Jake, Jake Lee, and I'm a 10th grader here at Weaver Academy. I have brought a musical instrument, a wind instrument, uh, that is the flute. What inspired me to play the flute was uh, video game music, believe it or not, because the, in, in video game music there would be certain like, games with a certain genre of music um, that, that often lend spaces for a solo or a specific wind segment of in, in, like in the songs, and I thought it was very cool. I've been playing the flute for about, so I started playing the flute back in sixth grade 
at the beginning of my middle school years. And I kept playing the flute throughout those years. And then uh, this is where I am, I'm still playing the flute in 10th grade. I was not home uh, taught, but it's more um, like in school learning. It was kind of hard to get it at first, but then I got the hang of it once I started to understand. So when you're when so when you're opening your flute case, well you will have your three segments of the flute: the head piece, the middle piece, and the tail piece. My favorite songs to play on the flute is back. Uh, I think last year, in ninth grade, was the song called Coney Island Rag. I thought it was, well to me, it was my favorite because it was very fun to play on the flute and it was just like, and it flowed, and it flowed so perfectly. I enjoyed it very much. The flute, I wouldn't say this is a good starter, a starter um, instrument. I think a trumpet is more suitable for a first beginner. Uh, instrument. You can move on to a string instrument if you wish, but if you're interested in learning a flute and how um, its mechanisms work, you could get a flute, join a band class, and you could you could pick up from there. And in sports news, we learned how Smith High School student Darina Hill discovered her passion for golfing. Hi, my name is Darina Hill. I play golf and I go to Ben L. Smith High School. My biggest influence in my golf career has been my family. Um, I just like the fact that they're always there for me and they always support me. Golfing at Smith High School is fun. Even though I'm the only women's golfer at the school, I still have fun with my coach and with my brother. Um, my coach has helped me with my golf game by when I don't hit a good shot, he's always there to calm me down or say something that will make me excited or happy. My family helped me with my passion on golf by always making sure I'm on time, taking me to the practice ranges, and helping me with coaches and getting me clubs. I like to represent my school in competition golf by being the first women's state championship of qualifying. And it was a fun experience to uh, if you're trying to get into golf, I would say have fun. Don't be upset if you don't get, get it first because golf is a hard game and it's mentally and emotionally impactful. I love golf because I can play it with my family and it's an individual sport, so that means everything is on you. And finally, we asked several students the same question. What class do you wish your school offered? What is another class you think should be offered at school and why? I think that Weaver should offer a welding class because I would just love to take a big piece of metal and then another big piece of metal and then stick them together and then it's one piece of metal, but it was two and it's an even bigger piece. I think. Weaver should offer um, a nap class as an elective um, because I think it would be nice to be able to nap and also learn about um, forming better sleep habits and um, maybe learning more about um, what your mind does um, while you're dreaming or while you're sleeping. Uh, I think you should add a gaming class because it can teach you how to get better and it's fun. Uh, probably cosmetology. I think that would be really cool since Weaver's like all about um, the School of the Arts and 
having programs for when you get to college. So. I think we, we have civics already, but I think we need another class that prepares us for the more, the more like bureaucratic parts of life that we have to face after high school, like taxes and stuff like that. Well, I think another class should be offered like just a strings class for electric guitar and just bass guitar. So you're not forced to just play a classical style all the time if you don't want to. Uh, I think we should go back to some sort of home ec class because I think those were very useful skills for people to have and there's no real reason to get rid of it. Um, I think more creative writing classes should be offered at Weaver. I think that uh, we have some English classes, but they often focus on like analyzing texts and not a lot of creative writing. So I think some more creative writing classes would uh, help the school a lot. Well, we hope you enjoyed our show today, and we hope you will tune in next time on the Weaver Wire. Have a great rest of the week.